today to recall your faithfulness. Thank you for walking with us every day and that you are with us always. You proclaim that your promises are true and your goodness and love never fail. In this moment, we come to you and lay our lives before you. May we honor, worship, and adore you with every fiber of our being. Father, we proclaim that you are the Holy One, the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Your beauty and majesty are beyond compare. On this day, we join all those who worship and confess you as Lord. From generations past and present, and with the angels that sing in heaven of your greatness and splendor. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we bow down and worship you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Let's stand together as we offer our prayers in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God has got great things for us, and he's got great plans for each of us. So let's ask today that our hearts can be open to God's plan, and that we may feel the movement of his Spirit within us. Lord Jesus, you are the source of all life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you guide us along our way. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, every day you bring us new blessings. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, Increase our faith, hope, and love, and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise in heaven through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing, compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with either eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own acre, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves, as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved, now hope that sees for itself is not hope. For who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do see, we wait with endurance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, the Lord has done marvels for us. The, the Lord, Lord has done, done marvels for us. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouths were filled with laughter, and our tongue with rejoicing. The, the Lord, Lord has done, done marvels for us. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The, the Lord, Lord has done, done marvels for us. The Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that saw in our tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done marvels for us. Although they go forth weeping, carrying their seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done marvels for us. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, 
Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. May God's word dwell in our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? To what can I compare it? It's like a mustard seed that a man took and planted in the garden. When it is fully grown, it became a large bush, and the birds of the sky dwelt in its branches. Again, he said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch of dough was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Now before Mass, for those of you who are here and the folks who are at home uh, don't necessarily see this, I always try to encourage our young people and our not-so-young people to always speak the prayers out nice and loud, to make the responses, because we want all of our prayers to rise up to the Lord in His goodness so that we can receive all His blessings. You see, I always want, and I always want our teachers to do this too, is I want to set a very high standard. We want to give the best we can to God. We want to give the best we can to God. And so that means that sometimes we have to dig a little deeper, right? We have to give a little bit more effort. Because you know what it's like. If you decide that uh, on your next math test, you're going to get a C, and that's fine. That's good enough. I'll just go for a C. That's okay. If that's all that you go for, then you'll probably just get a C. Maybe. Maybe you won't even get a C. Maybe you'll get a D, or maybe even a F. All right, because if you aim low, you're probably going to achieve low. Where what I'm hoping for and what all your teachers and your parents are hoping for and all of us here at St. George is that all of our students here will always aim high. So you'll always give your best work and you'll always do the, the best job that you can. That may not mean that everybody's gonna get straight A's and that's okay. But it's the idea is that we put our effort into it. We put our effort into it. Now, does anyone here know who Daniel Burnham was? Daniel Burnham. He was a very important person in the history of Chicago. Anyone know who Daniel Burnham was? Anybody? Oh, you should. You know. Because we enjoy a lot of the things that Daniel Burnham did for the city. In the 1890s, Daniel Burnham planned the city of Chicago after the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. The city was leveled, it was all burned up, but Daniel Burnham said, we need to rebuild Chicago so it will be a great city. And his motto was, never make small plans. Never make small plans. And so because of Daniel Burnham, we have things like the Museum of Science and Industry, the Art Institute, the, the layout of all downtown. Basically, Daniel Burnham put that all together. And so we have a great city in Chicago because Daniel Burnham did not believe in making small plans. He made big plans, big plans. Well, you know what? God has got big plans for each of us, every single one of us, no matter how young we are or how old we are, no matter how small we might be or how tall we might be, whatever it is, God has got big plans for every single one of us. Now, next time we get together, we're going to be celebrating an important feast day on November 1st. Who can tell me what that feast day is on November 1st? Can you tell me? All Saints Day, excellent, that a girl, right. All Saints Day, everyone remember that, November 1st. On All Saints Day, we honor all the people who are in heaven. And we ask that they'll pray for us so we can get there too. But that's God's big plan for all of us, is that we would be counted among the saints in heaven. In the meantime, God has big plans for us now. Because we may feel like we're one of those tiny little mustard seeds and we don't really have a whole lot to offer. 
And yet God knows that inside us, every single one of us, he has given us gifts that he wants us to grow and develop and mature into wonderful people, into wonderful devoted Christians as disciples of Jesus Christ. That's the goal that every single one of us has. And so we give it our best. So we recognize that God has got a plan for us. God's plan needs to be our plan. Because if we don't make a God's plan our plan, then our plan is getting smaller. Because God always has big plans for us. Big plans for us to be saints in heaven and saints in the works here on earth. That's our job. To always be striving to become saints. People known as a people of love and holiness and prayer and action. We don't just talk about Jesus. We do stuff the way Jesus would. We change the world so that we can see the growth of the kingdom of God right here on earth right now. And God wants to use every single one of us as his instruments. So what's God got for you? What is he looking for out of you? What is it that he is asking for you? That's a question that we ask not only when we're in kindergarten or first grade or second grade or even when we get to high school. That's a question that we ask every single day of our life, no matter how old we get. Even if you live to be 100 years old, every day we want to ask God, Lord, what is your plan for me today? So... With that in mind, let's stand together as we offer our prayers and petitions. Those, those with petitions, please come forward. With trust in God's generosity, we offer our prayers this day. For our church here on earth, may the Holy Spirit continue to protect her and preserve her. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in public office, may the Lord bless their efforts to protect the dignity and sanctity of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hunger for God and for all who seek to provide them for their daily dead, for their daily bread, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, as we celebrate the Eucharist, may the Holy Spirit help us grow in unity and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the light of Christ, may they rejoice in fellowship with the saints in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our special intentions that we hold dear in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also want to pray for uh, Fabio Musto and for Tony Corbine, who passed away. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our Mass intentions today, Irv Lovato and the intentions of Mary Scudella, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we know that you have big plans for each of us and that your plan is for all of us to reach heaven one day so that we can live with you and all the angels and saints. We ask you, Lord, to guide us, bless us, so that we may hear your voice speaking to us and that every day we may fulfill the plan you have for each one of us here present. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread and wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual food and drink. And blessed be God forever.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Amen. O Lord, look on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, Jesus, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to all your gifts that by sinning we had lost. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so now we recall all that Jesus did to save us from sin and death and to open the gates of heaven for us. We recall the Last Supper when he gave us his body and blood in the form of bread and wine. We proclaim our mystery of faith and then we go on to pray for every single person who's ever walked on this earth. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and glorious resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring us to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, with priests, deacons, religious men and women, seminarians, with our families, our classmates, our teachers, our friends, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember our brothers and sisters who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, St. George, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so made one family in Jesus, who is our brother and our Lord, we pray as he taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and you say to each of us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we offer one another a sign of Christ's love and peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the folks who are at home, or those who won't be receiving communion today, I ask that you make an act of spiritual communion, asking that Jesus will come into your heart today.
Together we stand and pray. O Lord, may your sacraments perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this Mass is ended. We go in peace. And thanks be to God. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks for being here, folks. And students, I'd ask you to please be seated. First of all, I'd like to say how much I appreciate the work that our readers put in today. You did a really fine job. Thank you for that very much, every one of you. Thank you. And I want to thank everyone because, you know, uh, sometimes during Mass it's just kind of hard to sit still and to keep quiet, but you really do a good job, and so I'm very grateful for that. But to sit, just sit down. Don't get dressed. You're not going out yet, okay? I don't want you to get overheated, okay? Just relax. A couple things that I'd like to talk about. Uh, mainly to the people who are in fifth grade and up. Fifth grade and up. If you're Catholic and you're in fifth grade and up, you will have the opportunity to become altar servers. We haven't had altar servers in a long time because of COVID. And everybody wants to get back to normal, right? We're all looking forward to the time when we don't need the masks and all that sort of thing. So one of the signs that we're getting back to normal is having our altar servers and so the altar servers assist the priests and the deacons in celebrating Mass. And so there's all kinds of jobs that a server has to do, and we really need that help. And I would love to have all of our Catholic students here at St. George to be servers. So now, of course, to serve, all you have to do is show up for Mass a little bit early. That's really all you have to do. And every person who received Holy Communion today should be at Mass on Saturday evening or Sunday. Every person who received Holy Communion today should be at Mass every Saturday or Sunday. That's what we as Catholics do. That's part of our lifestyle, is going to Mass on a regular basis, once a week. And so I really want to remind everyone of that. And if you need to ask your parents to bring you to church, ask your parents to bring you to church. I know some of you may go to other Catholic churches. That's fine. And if you're not Catholic, uh, you need to be going to your church, too. So everybody has a responsibility and the blessing of being a part of a community and being a part of God's family. And the way we celebrate that, especially, is at Mass, especially on Saturday evening or Sunday. So please keep that in mind, everyone. And since you're supposed to be here anyway, being a server really doesn't take that much more effort. It really doesn't. And it's a way to really get involved. And that's what I want. I want you to be involved. It's all part, about, it's all part of God's plan for you. How are you going to live out God's plan? Well, doing ministries and service in the, in the parish and in the school is one way that we start to fulfill God's plan for each of us. All right, because God doesn't want us just to sit like lumps. All right, that's not what we're about. And believe me, I've seen your energy. I don't see any lumps in here at all. You've got a lot of energy in our school. And so I want you to use that energy. And one of the ways you can use it is to serve at, at the altar. So Father Tom is going to be responsible for that. He's going to be wor working with Deacon Greg, who maybe you don't see because he usually works during the week. But uh, Deacon Greg and his wife, uh, Mrs. Bartos is going to be helping with training the servers and so you're going to be getting all that information very soon because I'd really like to have servers on our altar by December 1st so there's some training you got to learn there's things you got to learn okay but again it's all about the big plan that God has for us God wants us to be involved God wants us to give the best of ourselves and so I really hope that I have a lot of servers from fifth grade and up to be a part of that wonderful ministry. So, thank you for your attention. I also wanna say, getting back to normal, part of getting back to normal is getting the vaccine. 
And pretty soon, a lot more of you are going to be eligible to get the vaccine. And on November 7th, that's a Sunday, November 7th, during Mass times, we're going to be offering the vaccine right here at St. George. So you can tell your parents. So it doesn't matter if you need the first shot or the second shot or the booster. You will be able to get it. So for all of you who are going to be eligible, probably pretty soon, I'm hoping by November 7th, you'll be able to get the shot right here at St. George. It goes for all of our students who will be eligible by that time, I hope. And for all the folks who are watching at home too, get your shots, get your boosters. Thanks everybody. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.